Right, Ms. Maris, before the corner of the plaintiff's uh, first motion for temporary custody, parenting time, and child support, this being a newly filed divorce action, uh, present uh, for this Zoom hearing is attorney Alex Goldman representing the plaintiff petitioner, Emily Carey Hayes. Emily K. Hayes present audio, Mr. Goldman? She is not present this morning, Your Honor. Okay, but the defendant, Alex Hayes, is present. Good morning, Mr. Hayes. Good morning, sir. Have you tried calling your client this morning, Mr. Goldman? I have several times left voicemails, sent texts. I spoke with her yesterday, and I know she was planning on attending, but I cannot explain her absence this morning. And, uh, this is a very short-term marriage of three months. Is that correct? The parties are separated? That is correct. But the children are teenagers, 17 and 15? Correct. All right. I guess there's a court not taking the action at this point in time. Um, Obviously, Miss Carrie Hayes had public assistance. Um, well, would normally the court would dismiss a motion of this nature, have you refiled, but obviously that's just a fee waiver, presumably. So there's no sense of this court dismissing this motion. You simply have your notice of hearing, Mr. Goldman. The court would suggest one possibility is why don't you, uh, um, if you have a, it looks like you have a phone number for Mr. Hayes, to schedule mediation. Is there anything at issue? Is, it, is custody and time the only issue in this divorce case? And I don't even know that that's an issue, Your Honor. Uh, the purpose of this hearing was to just get a child support order going. Understood. But again, let's get this divorce. It's a divorce action. If the parties uh, were only married for three months, uh, let's let's proceed with the, uh, presumably, we can waive the six-month statute waiting period. If they're separated, and let's uh, maybe schedule mediation, get judgment divorce entered. And we can, we can address all those things, the custody, parenting time, support. Obviously, the parties have been doing well for the last... Well, this child is 17. There's been no issues. There's been no complaint for custody or parenting time. Is that correct? In the past 17 years? Uh, there there was a support file, um, and I know that custody and parenting time were addressed in that issue, but for the most part, I think that they have been successfully co-parenting. I, I think that Your Honor is correct that we could likely settle this at mediation. Okay. Your summons does not reference um, any other... Your summons says there are no other pending res or resolved civil actions involving the same parties. That is an error that I can okay. fix, however, should be fixed. I apologize, Your Honor. So what, uh, why don't you provide the court uh, with the underlying DS case, or is it a DP case, a DC case? It's DS, and I realize that I never actually got that information from my client, and I do apologize for that oversight. It's the first thing the court looked at. When I see there's a child that's 17, I'm thinking, you know, it's hard to believe that there's not a prior action filed between these parties unless they've worked it out between themselves all these years. Um, no, it's it's an oversight on my part, Your Honor, and I apologize. Because that'll obviously have to be incorporated in any any, any judgment of divorce. That of case course. number. Yeah. Um, so right now, the, the order in that case simply addresses custody and parenting time. Does not address child support. There was a support order. Uh, my understanding is that the party is married to get rid of that support order. I see. All right. Uh, does that appear to be the case, Mr. Pratt? Once the, uh, the once the court is informed that the parties have married, they uh, discontinue the support order. That's correct, Your Honor. All right, all right. We'll simply note for the record that the plaintiff failed to appear. Um, Mr. Goldman, the court suggests uh, that I've, I've uh, you can always contact the front of the court. They can give you a mediation date. I've got some mediation dates if you want, but I don't know what what, what the situation is with your client, whether she'll appear for the mediation or not. Yeah, I, I will arrange that uh, on my own time, Your Honor, but I do appreciate the offer. All right. Uh, Mr. Hayes, uh, is your address still 11? Uh, if, in fact, you're not meant no, to be married. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I thought you were asking about the phone number. Sorry about that. Yeah, Mr. Goldman has referenced a phone number in the pleadings of 734, an accurate phone number that he can, he can reach you at? No, that's not, that's not an accurate number. Okay. Um, if uh, Mr. Goldman gets a mediation date from the front of the court, maybe mediation date is not necessary. Mr. Goldman, maybe you can prepare a, a, a judgment after we you re notice for hearing your motion. That's a good idea, Your Honor. I, I will attempt to speak with Mr. Hayes to see if we can resolve that short of mediation. If there is no property to be divided, no joint debts, uh, <clears throat> Uh, judgment of divorce, we simply incorporate the, into that judgment of divorce this DS case and reestablish child support. 
Uh, but you tried calling your client this morning and she will not answer the phone. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. Mr. Hayes, when did you last have contact with uh, your wife, Emily? Um, last night. Okay. This morning, did, she, last night, yeah. did she, did you talk about the court hearing this morning? Yeah. She said she wasn't going to come. I'm sorry. She, she said what? She said she's not going to um, show up. She's not going to show um, up? Yes. Are you going to reconcile? Yes. I told, I oh. told the judge, I told the um, lawyer that. But he didn't want to hear me hear me out. So, right, uh, Mr. Goldman, uh, you've heard that. Obviously, Mr. Hayes is suggesting the parties have agreed to uh, reconcile. Are you back living together now, Mr. Hayes? Yeah, we never. In reality, we never moved out. I never moved out. I tried to tell the oh, lawyer okay. that, but he 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 don't want to listen. The divorce complaint alleges you separated on December eleventh. I've been, I've been at, I've been at the house. All right, Mr. Goldman, you, you, need, you need to talk to your clients, Mr. Goldman. Obviously, you're not getting, uh, it sounds like you're getting different, different information from her than what Mr. Hayes is providing this morning. Uh, so if, in fact, she wants to reconcile, then if you can prepare, uh, there's been no answer filed. You can just simply uh, file a dismissal. You don't need a stipulated order of dismissal. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, the court will simply make a note that uh, the plaintiff failed to appear. And then Mr. Hayes indicates that they have never separated, they're still living together, and they have agreed to reconcile. So hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see a dismissal uh, very soon. All right, Mr. Hayes, do you have any questions? No, but I just, I just don't appreciate it that the lawyer didn't want to listen to me or hear me out. Well, he's Your obviously... Honor, uh, I, I would like to say something on the record. All right, Mr. Goldman? There's a domestic case, and I know that Your Honor is familiar with abuse dynamics, and I'm concerned about the manipulation in this matter. Child support was repeatedly lowered in the DS case pursuant to Mr. Hayes' manipulation. Ms. Carey finally worked up the courage to file for divorce, and he's clearly gotten his claws back into her. So I'm doing my due diligence, and I will file whatever is proper next. Okay. Uh, do you want us to give you a hearing date here? Uh, Ms. Uh, Nancy's here. She'll give you another hearing date, or you reach I appreciate out to her. That. When you have I'd like to have a conversation with my client first. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Let's go, Mr. Goldman. The court appreciates that. Um, all right, Mr. Hayes, I'll conclude this hearing. You can uh, zoom out. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you, Mr. Goldman. Thank you. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Coach, do you want me to remove the recommendation from your queue then? Is that both parties are present. Uh, I didn't see anything in the queue. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. The parties have conferred this morning with Mr. Brower from the front of the court, who has provided the court with the following recommendation. The recommendation is that the apparently time shall continue as previously ordered. My child, Kyler, shall continue with virtual school through MAVA. And the parties will appear back before this court to review printing time on uh, Wednesday, June 5, 2024 at 9 a.m. via Zoom. That is the recommendation. Now, Ms. Williamson, do you understand the recommendation this morning? Yes, sir. Do you have any objection to the court adopting the recommendation? No, sir. Mr. Gondol, do you understand the recommendation? No. I'm sorry? Yes. Okay. Do you have any objection to the court adopting the recommendation? No. Okay. Um, Power is getting yeah. old. Fifteen years yeah. old. Um, all right. Prayer time will continue as previous order. The court will adopt the recommendation. You both email the copy of this. Make sure you keep the front of the court informed of any change of address. And that's ways off. Put this in your calendar, June five at nine a.m. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Have a good rest of day. You can zoom out. You as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brower. You're welcome, Your Honor. For the record, Ms. Maris, before the court, on the plaintiff's objection to a referee recommend order, which denied her motion to modify custody. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. It appears that both parties are present. Plaintiff petitioner Eric Badger, as well as defendant father Robert Badger III. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Parties have conferred with Ms. Andrus this morning. Good morning, Ms. Andrus. Good morning, Your Honor. And Ms. Andrus has provided a final recommendation. The matter be adjourned to February 28th at 9.30 so the defense attorney can be present. Yes, Your Honor. I believe um, defendant was not served. Um, Ms. Badger, uh, see she turned the object. His at Both the party addresses are confidential, um, so the front of the court has to mail it out for him. She put it in the Dropbox, so I don't know if it went to the right place. So. Um, I called defendant and he was able to appear. 
um, but he'd prefer his attorney be present. It appears that the last custody order in this case was entered in 2022. And the president award joint legal fiscal to the defendant father. Uh, would you agree with that, Ms. Badger? That this happened in 2022? Yes. That was the last custody order. In order, the Child Custody Act <laughs> promotes continuity, consistency. So in order for a parent to modify custody, there needs to, that person needs to convince this court by a preponderance of evidence that there's a significant change of circumstances surrounding the circumstances and condition of your child. Um, the referee denied your motion because there was not sufficient proper cause of change circumstances to warrant even a hearing to modify custody. In your motion, you simply allege that you'd like yeah. to be an active parent, not a weekend parent. So that's a matter yeah. of parenting time. It's not a matter of custody, Ms. Badger. Um, I petitioned the court six months ago for extended parenting time. I only have four overnights a month with my kid. And you guys told me that in order to get any more overnights, I had to go for joint custody. And you denied my request for more parenting time. And I don't think right. four overnights a month right. is enough time for any parent. Well, I'm not sure we said you guys told me that. This court did not tell you that. The parenting yes. time is separate from, from custody. I understand that. But when I went for more parenting time, you guys told me that I had... Okay, don't... Uh, hold on. I you said you guys. I'm not sure who you're referring the to. Court, the court. I'm sorry. The, court? the friend of the court told me that in order okay. for me to get any more overnights, that I had to go for joint custody. It's not true. It's not true. That if, in fact, your parenting time... Um, is increased to such extent that that it would modify custody. Then, then yes, and then that that's an issue. But in, in terms of additional overnight, um, it's, it's, it doesn't require custody. But at this point in time, the, the uh, I only have four overnights a month, and I, I did petition the court six months ago for more overnights, and you guys denied it and told me that what I was asking for was joint custody. Well, they would the court that. Court suggests that you consult an attorney, Ms. Badger. I do not recall what happened six months ago, yeah. but there, in this court circumstances, there is not a sufficient basis to modify custody. Maybe parenting time, you may be entitled to some additional parenting time. Yeah. If you want to file a motion to modify parenting time, so be yeah. it. But this court sees no reason to adjourn this matter uh, for attorney uh, for Ms. Badger's attorney to be present. Uh, my biggest will... thing, my biggest thing I brought up when we did go in front of the mediator was the fact that my son has been telling me that there's been violence over there in that home. And she said that that was all hearsay. And I asked the courts if they would interview my son and they denied that. And they said that I couldn't use hearsay of my son telling me that there's violence over there in order to get more time with him, to get joint custody with him. Okay. So if well, I would court, like, I'd like to petition the court to interview my son on this matter. Well, the, uh, what the court suggests is put your son in, uh, perhaps the two of you should agree to put your son in counseling. Is he involved in counseling right now? I have no idea. Robert doesn't keep me informed. And the last time I knew he hasn't been in, I think, four months. He hasn't been. Okay. Um, has there been any he likes physical... to pull him out all the time until I does, pressure him to put him back in. Does your does your son claim that there's a, a physical altercation between Mr. Badger and his uh, girlfriend or wife? Yes. My son also claims that his father um, threatens him that if he tells his mother anything, that he'll be grounded, that he'll be punished. And my my son tells me all this stuff all the time. And I told the courts this, and I asked them if they would be willing to interview my son in this manner, because I don't know what else to do about it. Well, normally, six-year-olds don't want to be involved in the middle of a he's, contest he's between the parents. He's eight. So the courts, the court, just a minute, you keep interrupting the court, Ms. Badger. The Sorry. court's reluctant to order that a six-year-old yep. be interviewed by the friendly court. Uh, yeah. is, is your son in counseling right now? Maybe that's where he started. You put him in counseling, and if he disclosed things to the counselor, the counselor can provide the court with a letter. Um, I'm he, not he, positive. I have to keep I have to keep pushing his dad to um, put him in counseling. I don't have the time to take my son to counseling. Um, so, I, I mean, I can put him in counseling all we want, but I don't have the days to do that and take him. And his father is inconsistent with taking him to counseling, and he'll miss months on end at a time with the counselor. Well, obviously, I'm surprised you say you don't have time. If, in fact, it's a benefit your, your, your son, then you should make the yes. time. I and only get my son the on the weekends. Time, if the points, appointments are on dad's party time, the dad would uh, would transport the child. Mr. Badger, do you have any objection to your son engaging in counseling? 
Absolutely not. He's not engaged in counseling. I'm sorry. I, I, your is response active, was not clear. I'm sorry. He is actively engaged in counseling. He goes once every few months. Uh, last year, it was once a month, just about. Um, with with little gaps in between, um, he did just start wrestling, which is two days a week. Right. Um, and then he does go to his mother uh, one day a week. So getting the times to get in there is, is, is rough with all the sports going on right now. Well, but counseling is important, obviously, if he's uh, got issues. Mr. Badger, can you, oh, can you be seen or something? He's walking around. Uh, Mr. Badger, he, he, Mr. Badger, not, hold on. You're in court yes, right I'm, now. I'm trying to listen. Okay, just maybe sit still. You're walking around. Uh, you realize when you're in court, you should sit in a vehicle or find a private room or something. Uh, uh, what's the I'm, name I'm of the counselor? Uh, what's the name uh, of the counselor? Who is the counselor, Mr. Badger? I'm trying to think of her name. I keep... Uh, She's right off Front Street, right around the corner from uh, the courthouse. Uh, Is it Dr. Yeager? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Miss Badger, are you aware that he's in counseling with Dr. Yeager? I am aware. My problem is that he'll pull him out of counseling and he won't go for months on end. And why don't you, why don't you take him on your time? If it's that important, why don't you take him on your time? I would love to. I, I, but I have him on Wednesdays for two hours and he has wrestling practice on Wednesdays during my um, my court order time. So unless Mr. Badger gives me permission, which he doesn't ever, to pick him up on his court ordered time and take him, I, I don't know what else I can do when it comes to that. All right. Uh, uh, and he's got wrestling, what, five days a week? He has wrestling on my day, which is Wednesdays, and then okay. Mondays. He only has it twice a week. Okay, well, let's uh, make this happen that mom can take him to counseling with Dr. Yeager. Mr. Badger, if you're too busy, let's let's uh, give mama uh, some time with your son so give him to Dr. Yeager. You know, I, know, I have no idea what Dr. Yeager's uh, schedule is. Uh, I believe but, uh, he should be going once a week. Okay, well, t talk with Dr. Yeager's office. Find out when she's, what day the, the month she's available. And your son should be seen him probably at least once a month. But the court, at this point, I'm going to adjourn to February 28th. So Mr. Badger can have Ms. Skorsky here. I'm just telling you, Mr. Ms. Badger, uh, your emotion uh, was not strong enough to support a modification of custody. Maybe parenting time, but not custody. I just want more and time with my kid. I, 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 I don't want to be a weekend parent. But it's a, um, we, we addressed this six months ago. Uh, again, perhaps uh, there might be, we can give you some additional parenting time if you can present to the court uh, when uh, Dr. Yeager is available for counseling. If he has not taken her, he's only taken her once every three months, uh, the court would agree she, he should be going at least once a month. Um, so contact Dr. Yeager's office. You can report to the court. And perhaps we can modify parenting time on February 28th, but it's really not a, there's not a basis. There's not sufficient cause to modify custody. So that, that will not change, but I'll, uh, we'll just defer that matter to February 28th at 930. You may want to contact an attorney, Ms. Badger, but uh, put that on the calendar February 20th, 930 via Zoom. Okay, thank you. So Mr. Badger, reach out to Ms. Gorski today. Um, well, I know you wanted the present that time. All right, um, all right that'll conclude. Everybody can both zoom out. Court is now in session. Page one, Erica Badger versus Robert Badger III. For the record, this matter is before the court on the plaintiff mother's objection to a referee recommend order, which denied her motion to modify custody. And this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. The present is the objecting party, Erica Badger, as well as uh, Attorney Maria Zagorski, uh, present representing the defendant father, Robert Badger III. Mr. Badger is present. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Miss um, Badger, the uh, uh, everyone has met with Mr. Pratt in front of the court. Mr. Pratt has recommended this court this morning that that rec referee recommend order be adopted. Do you understand the recommendation? I understand that. Okay. Um, I understand your desire to spend more time with your child, but, but the Child Custody Act uh, encourages continuity, consistency, and uh, currently there's a significant burden that the, uh, one has to meet in order to for the court to even consider changing custody um there's going to be a significant change of circumstances to justify even uh, consideration by this court of a custody modification and uh, there are simply not the allegations that would sustain your burden of showing a significant change of circumstances to justify um, modification of custody you understand that i understand that okay is there anything uh 
of course, inclined to adopt this recommendation. Is there anything uh, you wish to say or add? I I think there was a change in circumstance. I, I believe that it's a hearsay, and I understand that's a hearsay, but at the same time, my son being vocal with me about domestic violence happening in that home, being vocal with me about his dad not letting him talk to me about it without being punished, and um, it silences my son's voice, and it scares him. And I think that's a big change in circumstance. And I understand it's hearsay and it's just my son telling me this stuff. But as a parent, you do anything to protect your children. And I know that my son doesn't have to deal with that living with me right now. And I only have four overnights a month with my son. And I want to be a parent to him. I want to be a mom to him. And I want to not be a weekend parent. I do have other children that I have full custody of and she never misses school. She's a honor roll student. I can, I do this every day with my other children and I can do this with my son. And I don't believe four overnights a month is enough for any mother. Um, his dad doesn't really step up and take care of his responsibility on his part. He delegates a lot of his responsibilities to his girlfriend. She does pick our son up from school. She gets him ready for school. She gets him on the bus for school. She feeds him dinner. She takes him to doctor's appointments. I feel like a lot of the times I co-parent with her. He doesn't take him to any of his wrestling. She's the only one there when I show up to wrestling practices. His dad's never there. Um, according to my son, his dad comes home from work, sits in front of the TV and plays video games all night. I believe that a lot of that delegation should go to me and not his girlfriend because I am our son's mother. Um, so all I'm asking the courts is for more time with my or with our son because four overnights a month is no not enough time for any mom. Okay. Well, parenting time is something different than custody. There's I understand. A, the, the threshold to modify parenting time is much lower than changing custody. I understand um, that. So um, obviously no child should be exposed to any type of domestic violence, none, none whatsoever. Uh, so um, uh, that should not be current as present. And that's the basis to modify parenting time, certainly. Um, what, uh, when does your son have, uh, when are his monthly points with Dr. Yeager? Do you take him on Wednesdays? For Dr. Yeager? Um, Robert, Robert doesn't let me be involved in taking him to anything, any doctor's appointments. Um, I asked him. The question I, was, when, did, when does he have appointments with Dr. Yeager? What day of the week? Not Wednesdays then? It, no, it's, it's every three months. He makes an appointment for him and it's different at different time every month, every three months. It's a different date. Okay. Um, presumably your son would, would conf would disclose to Dr. Yeager he's been exposed to domestic violence. Have you do do contact have any contact with Dr. Yeager? Um, I have an appointment with her on Friday actually to go over a lot of stuff and talk about stuff. Okay. Well, um, if in fact he's disclosed those things to his counselor, that might be based to modify some parenting time. Um, I, I I feel like my son's afraid to. He even tells me when he tells me stuff, he tells me, "Please don't tell Dad because." He's afraid he's going to get punished and in trouble, and that's sad. So I don't know if he would disclose that stuff to her because I don't know if he would feel safe enough to do that. Um, to your knowledge, law enforcement has not been involved in these uh, scuffles between the large scuffle between Mr. Badger and his wife. Not that I am aware of. No. All right, Ms. Gorski, what's your client's uh, response to these allegations at the? And there's domestic violence going on in uh, his household. But my client's response to those allegations is, is that they're not true. There have been no police reports made. There is no domestic violence. Ms. Badger, I, I don't know what Ms. Badger asks this child and what he tells her trying to satisfy her in response, but those allegations are not true. My client has um, arranged for Bobby to go and see Dr. Yeager on March 7th and welcomes any disclosure. As I've stated in my response, this child is doing well in school. He is successful. My client works with Ms. Badger. He just sent me a text from March 24th uh, where he reminded her 
that it was her long week with Bobby for spring break and told her about the dentist appointment, what time and where, and asked her if she was able to take him. My client tries to work with Ms. Badger and in response, he gets, I want this or I'm taking you back to court. And I've attached those texts to my response. Ms. Badger will not stop. She has acknowledged that she's filed this same motion twice in the past year. And your honor, I can guarantee you that in a month or two months or six months, she'll be filing another one asking to change parenting time. She can't meet her burden of proof. All of her information comes from this eight-year-old who is, of course, unreliable. We have no idea what he's saying to, to please his mother. And, and this is absolutely baseless. And I'm asking for attorney fees. Does Dr. Yeager always uh, have the scheduled appointments with Bobby on Thursdays? Uh I don't know. Historically, Your Honor, um, Bobby has seen Dr. Yeager on and off since October of 2021. And that started because of the domestic violence in Ms. Badger's home. That's how my client ended up with custody. Um, so I think over the past, you know, three years, um, it's probably been at various times. My client did meet with Dr. Yeager already last week to talk to her about the current allegations, gave Dr. Yeager a copy of Ms. Badger's motion so that Dr. Yeager is prepared to help Bobby with whatever we don't believe exists. All right, thank you. Um, well, it's a good idea, Ms. Badger, for you to talk with Dr. Yeager. Maybe you can uh, get some input, some insight from her, what's going on. But at this point in time, the court will adopt the recommendation the court will uh, adopt the front court ref recommend order which of course denies your motion to modify custody if there is some circumstances in the future to modify printing time that may be a different uh, a different ball game but at this point in time the court will not uh, modify custody the court does not believe you've met your burden um oh how do i modify parenting time how do i start getting more time with my son i uh, unfortunately i cannot <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not your turn i can't advise you in that regard um, I've asked his dad multiple times to please let me see my son more, multiple times, all the time. Okay, what about this dental appointment that he reached out to you to help and he, you apparently couldn't? He reached out to me at the last minute and I had to work and I couldn't get it covered. But he reached out to me at the last minute to ask me, not a, a month ahead of time, not weeks ahead of time, a, a day ahead of time. Okay. Well, well, is a, I mean, I guess that's not true. Judge, is true. I'm, I'm looking at the text. He reached out on Friday and the appointment was on Monday. Yes. And I don't work all weekend. So how am I supposed to get time off work when I can't contact my employer to ask them if I can have time off? So judge, th it, this is, this is the problem is that my, yep. it, and I attached the text to my response. He does work with her. He, and this is, this is what he gets back is an argument. This is the okay. problem. If you look at the, right. it, the it was a the it was a last minute notification. Uh, Mr. Badger was a last minute notification. The obviously appointment has been made weeks ahead of time. If you think there's a conflict, you should uh, no, notify. Actually, you should notify mom when you schedule that appointment. He doesn't. This is the problem. Yeah. If you look at the screenshots of the text messages that Mrs. Sorgorski has sent you, at the top where it shows what he has me saved in his phone as, it shows he has me saved in his phone as the devil X. My son can see that. And I'm saved in his phone with a picture of a devil. It says so when Erica I call my son and talk to my son on his phone, that's what pops up on his phone. But says, right, the, court problem, notes, the court notes the two of you have during the custody of Mr. Gorski. Why is Mr. Badger not informing Mrs. Badger when she's, he scheduled a dental appointment? He does. He informed her when he scheduled the therapy appointment. He does, Judge. He no, does. He I reach out to him and I have to ask him, hey, when's Bobby's next appointment for counseling? And I have to do that multiple times in a month. Before he finally tells me, hey, he has an appointment coming up. Right. And this, Mr. Badger, this Mr. Badger, says there need not be an inquiry. When you schedule an appointment for Bobby, dental, uh, Dr. Yeager, medical, whatever, you need to notify her the time you make the appointment. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. If this continues, then obviously the court's going to modify parenting time. So, Mr. Badger, uh, it is critical that you notify and mom, you have a legal obligation to do so. I do. You're you don't. Well, it's a, he That's said, she said, this situation, you need to work together. Obviously, your son's going to continue counseling the rest of his years because you cannot co-parent. So get on the same page. Obviously, 
Yes, Mr. Badger, as your son gets older, he's probably is naturally wants to spend more time with his mom, and he's going to have more more voice in this uh, this uh, situation. He asks me all the time, Mom, can't you take me to school tomorrow? And I can. And he's father well, do, can't. Do you reach out to Mr. Badger and ask if you can take him to school? Oh, I have. Nope. Nope. Your parenting time is your parenting time, and that's what he tells me. The court, that's what the court gave you. If you want any more well, parenting time, take me to court. That's what he tells me. You want any more parenting time, you take me to court. And I have a well, text message. I sent that text message to you guys that shows that. Obviously, the uh, the court wants there to be consistency continuity during the school year. Miss Badger, you can always consider filing a motion to modify parenting time during the summer months. There's much more flexibility during the summer months when the child's not in school. But I, the court is not a fan of the child going back and forth, back and forth during the middle of the school week. Um, so you may want to consider that. But at this point in time, the court will adopt the recommended order, uh, which denies your motion to modify custody at this point in time. That will conclude this hearing. You can all zoom out. And Thank you. Conclude this matter. Thank you. For the record, this matter is before the court on the defense motion to terminate the discontinued Sobolink device and other relief. The hearing is being conducted via Zoom. President is Attorney Dominic Hamden, representing the defendant petitioner Nancy Tam. And Mr. Tam is present with Mr. Hamden. In addition, uh, plaintiff mother Brittany Counter is present, uh, along with her attorney, Ms. Kimberly Kuhn. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Morning, Judge. The court is well familiar with the history of this case, recognizing that this court entered an order in 2022 which required the defendant to engage in Sobolink prior to as well as during his parenting time. Um, there was a motion uh, filed before the seek a distance to continue that, uh, I believe in the middle of last year, the court denied that. Um, the matter was met before the court. The court has reviewed uh, the motion as well as the response. The parties have conferred with uh, Ms. LePrad, who's provided the court to find recommendation uh, that uh, the there should continue to be a provision that no alcohol shall be consumed by either party, uh, not only during parenting time, but immediately preceding parenting time. And then to further that, the sober link be discontinued March 31st, 2024, as long as there are no positive test results. That is a recommendation. Um, Mr. Hamden, is this recommendation agree with your client? It is, Your Honor. Right, uh, Ms. Kuhn. Your Honor, my client would like a longer time period of zero positive results before discontinuing the silver link. She does have concerns. We've never gone a year without a positive result. And Mr. Tam has told her, and she would testify under oath, that he sees no issue with him being able to consume alcohol during his parenting time. This court is well aware there's a prohibition against that. And we've been to court on numerous occasions where there have been statements made to the court by Mr. Tam that he has not drank, which have been proven false. So my client is very, very concerned because the sober link has done exactly what it was put in place to do. If Mr. Tam tests positive during parenting time, he doesn't get parenting time until the test is negative. There have been times where Mr. Tam has canceled parenting time because he's been concerned that he's going to have a positive result. My client would testify under oath about that as well. So given the fact that we haven't even been able to go a year without a um, positive result, my client had asked that we go one more year. And if there are no positive results, she would be fine with discontinuing it. To take it down from one year to two months, She's not comfortable with, given the statements that Mr. Tam had recently made to her about seeing no issue with drinking during parenting time. So I'm concerned, I'm concerned that without the sober link, that we're going to be back in court on numerous violations. I think the one thing that everybody can agree on is that this case for a long time was in court more than it was out of court. And with the sober link device, we have not been in court on any show cause motions for any alcohol related um, violations because the sober link and all of the mechanisms that this court has put into place have actually worked. So your honor, my client is asking for one more year. She understands that it can't go indefinitely. And she also understands that after that year, if Mr. Calendar wants to still have the attitude of he can drink during his parenting time, 
We probably will be back, but at least it gives mail another year and all of us ensuring that the order is being complied with and that Mr. Calendar is his parenting time. Thank you, Ms. Coon. Mr. Hamden, in the last six months, how many times has Mr. Tam canceled the scheduled parenting time because of he wanted to consume alcohol? Um, my client is telling me, Judge, it was never because he wanted to consume alcohol. He did, Judge, um, I think, either reschedule it in November um, because he was going hunting, um, but not because he was wanting to consume alcohol. And so we don't necessarily, we don't agree with that statement. Um, and just, just if I could judge, and I know that you're very familiar with this case and I know that you've read the motion and I didn't get the answer, but I understand you've read the answer. I believe the original order judge was entered in 2021. Um, the record will speak for itself, but, um, I believe that the original order was 2021. I, I could be wrong. Um, and, um, I don't believe um, the only other, the only other time there was a positive judge was in October of this year, and my client blew in about 15 minutes later and blew negative, and we gave you the receipt for the uh, the meal that he had with Mallory that day, and he only had Mallory that day for a couple of hours because he had to drop her off at brownies. So he blew in at the start of his parenting time and blew negative, and then there was that positive screen, and then he blew ne he blew negative like 15 minutes later, and so I'm not even. I don't believe that was a, a an accurate test. Um, and I think the negative screen and the receipt that he produced is, is that. that. Um, but that's that's kind of where my client is. And we're months apart, Judge, with regard to a termination time. Well, Mr. Hamden, obviously the court doesn't give a whole lot of weight to this uh, receipt from uh, Carl's Hideaway. What about a printout showing that he was negative? There, you do not catch the motion. The, no, okay. that he was negative 15 minutes later or 30 minutes later. I, I, I have that judge. And if you can, if screen share is available, I will show that to the court. Actually, right. it is a judge. I do have that. And I thought I had attached that and I apologize to the court, but it's right here, Your Honor. Ms. Kuhn, do you have a copy of that? The test results showing that he was negative? I have. After the positive? Uh, I have that he tested 15 minutes later. He was only a 0.02. So I don't know how quickly alcohol metabolizes, but he did test 15 minutes later, not minutes later, um, as stated in the um, motion to discontinue. And again, Mr. Tam, um, a receipt, I mean, you can ask for a receipt and ask that the receipt not include alcohol and pay for the alcohol on another receipt. So the fact that he has a receipt um, coupled with his lack of credibility throughout this whole case doesn't um, give me any any comfort in that this was a false test. Um, Soberlink, I know that when we had Soberlink in um, before your honor, and I think it was on this case, um, I I don't, I would be very, very um, doubtful that you can trip up the Soberlink machine. And Ms. Callender, if she were permitted to testify under oath, would state that Clancy was returning memory earlier. So if there was any consumption, it only would have been caught by that earlier return time. And I believe Ms. Callender is also, um, she has dates where Mr. Tam has told her that he's going to forego his parenting time because he can't blow negative. So those are, and if, and if she were to be permitted to testify under oath, Your Honor, that's what she would testify to. So the fact that there aren't many positive results is the result of Mr. Tam saying, I'm going to forego my parenting time because I am positive. So I think the sober link really has done um, and, and it has provided that, that mechanism to ensure that the parenting time orders that this court has in place with regard to no alcohol consumption are being followed. As I've stated before, you know, Judge, Mr. Tam does not follow court orders. So this has really worked to keep the parties out of court. And my client is requesting one more year because given the fact that Mr. Tam has canceled, and you're not going to see that um, because there was no parenting time, so he didn't have to test, given that coupled with the positive results that we've had at least one a year, my client is not convinced that Mr. Tam 
is going to comply with a court order, especially in light of the fact that he told my client that there shouldn't be any type of restriction. He should be able to drink alcohol with um, with Mallory. So that's the, those are the issues that we have. Okay. The, the court's already stated it's not going to much weight to this uh, receipt from Carl's Highway. My question, Ms. Kuhn, do you have a copy of the compliant test results or some, some document from Stoblink showing that Mr. I, Tam was a, was a negative uh, October 16th after his initial positive test of 0 0.02? It says on 1018 compliant secondary at 619, it says he submitted compliant secondary test. The court doesn't have any copies yet, but you have a copy showing that he was negative on the secondary test on that date? Uh, yes, I'm looking at it on screen, sir. Judge, is it not showing up on your end? I am. Oh, I've opened it no. up on mine. It's, no. It's, oh, it's showing up on mine, but not. Okay, I'm just asking, Ms. Kuhn, do you, do you have a copy of that? I do. I'm looking, yes. But does it show that Mr. Tam was negative about 15 minutes after he tested positive? It does. It showed, okay. that, he, it showed that he tested at 603, a positive test of 0 0.02. And then 15 minutes later, he was negative. At All right, six. thank you. There was also a lead positive test on October 18th. And I believe you raised that, Mr. Hampton. You acknowledge that he tested uh, positive October, or you've attached to your motion. Judge, my, my, for, for clarity, I, my client does acknowledge that on October 18th, right around 6 o'clock, Your Honor, 6.03, 6.04, that there was a positive screen of 0 0.02. And then as Ms. Kuhn has just indicated, and as I'm trying to show the court on the board at 619 on October 18th, it says Mr. Clancy Tam, Tam Clancy has submitted a compliant secondary test. And I- um, Was that I'm secondary sure test positive or negative? There I see it now. Negative. It was negative, Judge. Okay, so there was two times, the October 16th as well as 18th, where he tested positive no. and then oh, shortly no, after tested negative. Is that correct? No, Judge, there's just the one positive on October 18th. There is no October 16th positive test. Okay, well, let's see where I get October 16th then. Uh, if that's in my motion, Judge, that's an error. It was the 18th. Okay. There's a positive, uh, Ms. Kuhn is attached to her pleadings, a positive test alert uh, of September, I'm sorry, of, uh, it says October 18th, 2023. Mr. Uh, Clancy test positive with a point, point zero 0.02. Yes, Judge. That's on the, the 18th of October. Uh, yes. What about the 16th of October? Judge, I don't believe there was any positive screen that day. At least there wasn't to my knowledge. Right, so, yeah, I'm not sure where the court got the October 16th alleged uh, notice of non-compliant test results. So there's only one date issued, and that was the 18th of October. Is that correct, Ms. Kuhn and Mr. Hamden? That Mr. Yeah. Tam tested positive, but then uh, shortly thereafter it was negative? For 2023, he also, in 2022, tested positive too. All right, I'm talking about uh, October 2023. I got I had a note here in my notice of October 16th as well as the 18th. I'm not sure where I came up with the 16th. Uh, I, I just asked my client, Judge. I don't think my client had Mallory on that day. Either. Oh, uh, Judge, yeah. Judge, on the notice of compliant alcohol test result that Mr. Hamden submitted to the court, it says that one defendant and, re and defendant and plaintiff received an email on October 16th, 2023 from Soberman, which contained a notice of positive test alert following defendant's breathalyzer. So it was in notice of compliant alcohol test result that was filed by Mr. Hamden. On October 31st, data October 31st. That's, so that's, that's the, it's the wrong date, Judge. It meant the, I meant the 18th. That's on me. So. All right. So it should be the 18th then. We're only talking about the 18th. All right. That's a typo. Uh, I do see where also Ms. Callender, Ms. Quinn of Ms. Callender filed a notice of non compliant alcohol test results on October 27th, that being uh, relating to the October 18th positive yes. Yes. test result I, from Sobo. I apologize, Judge. All right, um, uh, Ms. Kuhn, uh, in the past six months, uh, how often has Mr. Tam informed Ms. Condor that he's a doctor exercise spare any time, other than when he was deer hunting? Your Honor, can I ask my client to provide that information? I'm not sure. Ms. Gallander? Yep, sorry about that. Um, 
there there have been multiples um one i'm just checking my calendar right now give me one moment other than when mr tam was heading out of town to go deer hunting was there any times in the past couple of months where he simply advised you he cannot or was unable to yes. for any time yes just looking back the last couple of months there was eight how often two three four five eight sorry eight times yes and mr hamden uh did, first of all, Mr. Gowden, did he advise you why he was not exercised for any time? Yes, he'll usually call me and state, um, you know, if Mallory has something going on or whatnot, um, we'll usually work around it. But then um, after the last October incident, he just gives it up now because he says he doesn't want to test positive. Okay. Any response to that, Mr. Hamden? Judge, my, my client's indicating that he would like to respond, but I can summarize for you and say that the parties have changed their parenting time um, for Mallory's benefit. In fact, they even did it yesterday. My client had to do both the drop-off and the pickup for Mallory. Um, that was not because of an alcohol issue at all. It was because that's what the parties needed, and that's what Mallory needed. Um, that was not because of alcohol. And my, my client does want to address the court, and my client's position is that that's not happened. So... Go ahead. I've never canceled a. Uh, you can bring it down. Uh, can, so. I've, I've never canceled a parenting time to go drinking with anyone or or, or by myself. Uh, Mallory is uh, uh, now in third grade. She has uh, activities with friends, brownies, parties, uh, skate parties that I, that I work around or um, or change our schedule. And I usually ask if I can have a different date or make up. But I, I've never once canceled an opportunity to hang out with my daughter for for any type of for, for anything. Unless I was uh, uh, hunting or go was going on vacation and wasn't in in, in Monroe County, essentially, um, but it, and it's never going to happen in the future. I I, I get Mallory every other weekend and, and two nights a week, um, and I enjoy that time and she does too. I, I don't cancel uh, for any any reason unless I'm out of town, which happens very rarely. All right, thank you. And the, the court does recall, Miss Kuhn, Mr. Hamden, that I believe Mr. Simonton uh, retired. Head of the district probation department did a substance assessment of uh, Mr. Tam years ago and then uh, determined that Mr. Tam did not have any addiction uh, to alcohol. It's just simply that he just sort of thumbed his nose at the court and said, well, no one's going to know if I consume during parenting time or not. And the court was concerned about Mallory's young age. Mallory's obviously now older. Um, but uh, the court wants uh, Mr. The court's going to continue the provision that Mr. Tam and Ms. neither one of you are consuming alcohol during parenting time. The parenting time is to spend quality time with Mallory not to be consuming alcohol. Uh, so that will continue. The court uh, will, uh, however, uh, discontinue a sober link um, on the June 30th, 2024, as long as there are no positive test results in the interim. And you get those results, correct, Ms. Kuhn, you and Ms. Calendar get those whenever there's a positive uh, re test result? Yes. yes. All right, so that will continue then until June 30th. Don't no need to come back as long as there's no positive test results to now on June 30th. Then Mr. Tamp can relieve that responsibility. Uh, Mr. Tam, so, but no alcohol consumption. Mallory is, I'm sure she's a smart young lady, and uh, uh, we don't want there to be any, any situation where Mallory's been put in the middle because dad's been drinking. We got to come back to court about that. So um, please uh, put your priorities with spending quality time also with, with Mallory rather than consuming alcohol. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Mr. And Mr. Pratt, if you can change your, uh, your, uh, Recommend or the court will adopt that if someone wants to formalize it, they can do that. But the public will continue until June 30th, 2024, as long as uh, this year thereafter, provided there are no positive test results between now and then. Thank you, Judge. Anything further than uh, this after this morning, Ms. Kuhn or Mr. Hamden? No, Your okay. Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That will conclude this matter. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. You too, Judge. Thank you. you as well, Your Honor. All right, for the record, Mr. Brent, Brinson is appearing from the Monroe County Jail via Zoom this morning. Also present is Monroe County Friendly Court Attorney Rebecca Hicks. Um, Mr. Brinson, uh, you're well aware of this uh, child support obligation, but you seem to come before the court quite often. Ms. Six, uh, are you asking that the court hold Mr. Brinson in contempt of court? He's probably got some time over his head, is that correct? He has fully served his sentence on his first finding of contempt um, in this matter. I will note for the court, I did check on AS400 after looking at the jail list. It does appear as if there is a felony 
non-support warrant that he will be arraigned on later today on this case um, it, that was just authorized in November of last year. What are the approximate arrearages? Um, the approximate arrearages are $22,300.60. All right. So uh, what do you suggest we adjourn this to um, adjourn till Friday? Oh, Your Honor, sorry. The jail just let me know that he was already arraigned this morning. His bond is $4,999.90. So since he's already arraigned and that is proceeding, um, the friend of the court, uh, actually, we would rather just set ours aside and, and we will resume um, adjudic at, following adjudication. We will resume enforcement. They've already proceeded, and he has to post almost five thousand dollars cash to get out of jail. I don't see a bench warrant in the court's queue to recall. Oh, I apologize. Let me. I don't think I pushed those this morning. I'll so, do that Mr. Right Brinson, now. Mr. Brinson, the court's going to simply adjourn this to a future date. We're going to monitor now that you're being charged with a criminal offense, a felony, non-support charge. You go to prison for that, Mr. Brinson. The courts over the years tried to help you get a handle on this child support obligation. Uh, by having you file a motion to reduce support, giving you job lists. Um, so unfortunately, you find yourself in this position. But um, because of that, the court's going to cancel your bench warrant. What uh, did you suggest to Ms. Six for the review? Um, your Honor, I, could we adjourn it without a date? And then once he's adjudicated with the um, Attorney General's office, we will set a new, um, we will start a new show cause date for him. Okay. And now uh, you'll be able to. Uh, You'll keep tabs on it so you can track uh, the status of the felony non-support charge. Is that correct? That is correct. We make a note in our MyC system so that we can continue monitoring that. Bro, well, that will work. And the court will re cancel the bench warrant upon receipt of that. So, Mr. Brinson, do you have any questions this morning? Basically, this is a civil proceeding before the family courts. You're now being charged in criminal court for felony non-support. So, this civil proceeding will just adjourn without date. We're going to monitor the progress of the uh, felony non-support charge. Any questions? I'm sorry, this is breaking up. Oh, uh, yeah, this is breaking up really bad. I'm sorry, that's me. Our new charges is that because of is that because I, I wasn't aware of new charges? Is that because child support that I'm being that I have new charges? Yes, that's the basis for the criminal I'm charge. Just curious because I haven't been able to get a. a, a <laughs> yes, the criminal charges because you have twenty two thousand dollars in arrearages. Mr. Brinson, so okay. you'll uh, proceed in the criminal court okay. division, and if you um, if you um, don't go to prison, you're sent to locally. The friendly court will monitor this, but these emergencies are not going to go away unless Mr. Over uh, comes in and waives some of them, um, or you got family and friends that can help you out. But anyway, this civil action by the family court will uh, be adjourned without date. Any questions? So another, I don't know, another, if anybody bring. The five thousand dollars cash that I was that bond. If she were to waive that amount, would I be able to? Would I be able to get a PR? Or and do you? I don't. I don't know. I haven't been able to speak to anybody that knows anything yet. Well, you asked for court appointed attorney, correct? I'm kind of. Just, I'm kind of learning everything. Where he wasn't aware of anything when I talked to him this morning. Okay, ask your court appointed attorney, Mr. Brentford, but uh, she'd have to waive 100% of the arrearages, all 22,000. And that would, uh, but again, if it's public assistance involved, she cannot waive by the, uh, oh. back the child support arrearages due to the state of Michigan. So talk to your court appointed attorney about all that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. You can step out, Mr. Brentford. Thank you. All right, the court's received the bench warrant. I'll cancel that. For the record, Mr. Darity is appearing this morning for the Monroe County Jail. We've been arrested on a bench warrant over the, uh, this past 24 hours. Also present for the Zoom hearing is Monroe County Attorney Rebecca Hicks. Uh, Ms. Hicks, uh, can you provide any additional information regarding Mr. Darity, please? Um, certainly, Your Honor. This case has a current monthly support obligation of $256 a month. The arrears balance right now is $2,431.21. The last payment received was May 8th of 2023 in the amount of $1,100. You're asking the court to hold Mr. Darity in contempt, is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. All right, uh, Mr. Darity, do you understand you're being charged this morning with civil contempt of court for fair to pay child support? 
Upon a conviction, you could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail. Yes, sir. This is possibly of jail. You have the right to an attorney. If you're unable to afford an attorney, the court will appoint an attorney to represent you at public expense. Do you understand all that, Mr. Darity? Yes, sir. Are you asking for a court appointed attorney? Uh, no, sir. I just would like a chance to, to pay. He comes oh, back. Uh, he's breaking up. Okay, uh, well, the court's going to proceed with appointed attorney to represent you, Mr. Darry, because there's a there's a significant possibility of jail. Uh, what is your current mailing address? And that's much better. Thank you, officer. Um, that's B-R-E-E-L-A-N-D. Yes, sir. Where's that? Rockwood? Flat Rock? Uh, Flat Rock. Are you currently employed, Mr. Darity? Yes, sir. With whom? Uh, myself. Self-employed doing what? Uh, home and uh, remodeling. Home improvement. When did you last receive income? Uh, I just currently got two jobs yesterday. When did you last receive income? Uh, like last week. How much did you receive last week? I only got a couple hundred bucks last week. How much of that of that do you have left? Uh, the court or the jail just took like sixty something bucks from me, uh, seventy something bucks from me. Do you have any other income other than your self employment income? Uh, no, sir. Do you own any property of any value, such as snowmobile, boat, uh, uh, bank account? Uh, no, sir. Right. I have a bank account. How much is in it? There's not much in it. A couple of dollars. All right. Court will grant a request for court appointed attorney. We're going to put this matter over. Um, it's actually dealt on Friday of this week. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, we're going to schedule us for contempt proceeding. Mr. Jerry, the court's grant your request for court appointed attorney. And we'll uh, schedule this matter for hearing on Friday of this week. That's February 2nd, 2024, 11 15 a.m. Who do you live with? Uh, my mother. Okay, this is a situation where you have to reach out to your mother to see if she can post a bond on your behalf. And if you want to be released between now and Friday, if you appear, if you get the post bond, you need to appear in person on Friday. If you cannot post a bond, then you, we will, you can appear via Zoom from the jail on Friday. Um, you don't have much money, sir. Okay. Of course, going to require you to post a bond. Uh, the courts are taking five hundred dollars, Miss Six. Any uh, thoughts or input on the bond? That is agreeable with the friend of the court, Your Honor. All right. So, Mr. Darity, if you want to be released, you're order you're required to post a five hundred dollar cash away bond. That bond will apply towards your wages, not toward fines, costs. So, benefit you one hundred percent. So, uh, especially if you have a job lined up and we want to get you back to work. Um, see, if we talk to your mom, see whether she get the five hundred dollars to advance to you. And if so, you'll be home for dinner tonight. If you can't, then uh, we will appear from the Morecambe County Jail on Friday at 11.15. Your corporate attorney will um, contact you by cell phone if you post a bond. If not, the attorney will talk to you via Zoom from the county jail between now and then. And the attorney will also be here on Friday at 11.15. Any questions? No, sir. So again, reach out to family and friends. See if they can pull together. It'll, it'll benefit you and it'll apply towards your marriages. And you need yes, to sir. notify the front of the court of a new address. You need to you have a continuing obligation, Mr. Jerry, to keep the front of the court from any change of address. So if you were mailed a notice to appear in, the, say, November, December, and it was mailed to you at the Delaware address in Redford, you didn't get it, that's on you. you got to keep them in front of change of address place, so you can see notices. I lost that place, be, sir. Well, but you got to be proactive. you got to, in fact, if, you're, if you get laid off, you're injured, you're going to file a motion to reduce your support. Right now, it's clicking along at $256 a month. You got to be proactive, and the front of the court can help you deal with this. Whether it's fine, motion, reduce your support, giving you a job list, uh, Mr. Darity, but you've uh, you got to pay more attention to this obligation. In any event, we will see you on Friday then, 11 15 a.m. Who Unless is you have paying this? Uh... Never mind. I don't even want to start nothing. You got a question? I mean, uh, Jacqueline's been in rehab for the last eight months. Who am I paying this to? I don't know. Uh, perhaps if she's had, if the children receive public assistance, it's going back to the state of Michigan to reimburse the taxpayers. Yes, sir. Um, and if, if the children live with you now, you need to file a motion to stop the support. Yes, sir. 
All right, you can step out. We'll see you on Friday, Mr. Darity. Yes, sir. I apologize. For the record, Mr. Barton is uh, personally present in court this morning for contempt proceedings. And also present is his court appointed attorney, Mr. Timothy Leiter. Hey, ma'am, your name? Ma'am, what is your name? Rachel Oliver. Okay, you're from North Woods? Yes. Okay, you are the mother of the child whom Mr. Barton is paying child support, is that correct? Yes. All right. Um, the court would note, uh, Mr. Leiter, that Mr. Barton uh, did post a 500 hour bond, a cash bond, which is wonderful. So you can go back to work. Um, so I recall he had a job with Pioneer Metal. Mr. Barton, were you able to keep that job? Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right. Glad you're able to postpone that bond, of course. We'll be released towards your rearages. So benefits you. Um, Mr. Leiter, have you had a chance to uh, confer with uh, Mr. Barton? Your Honor, I had a chance to confer with Mr. Barton as well as Ms. Hicks. Uh, we do have a resolution to this, so we have a plea agreement. I would let Ms. Hicks place that on the record. Ms. Hicks? Uh, yes, Your Honor. He did post that $500 cash bond. Um, the agreement would be that he would admit to the contempt. Um, he did spend two days in the jail, so two days immediate credit for the two days served, forfeit the $500 bond towards his um, arrears, and then I would like to put this over to April 2nd at 8 a.m. on my docket just to monitor that payments continue coming in through income withholding. Now, with the income withholding, will that not only cover his current monthly support, but also will, will there be an additional amount to apply toward the verges? That is correct, Your Honor. When they go out and there is an arrears balance, it always goes out for current support plus something towards the arrears each month. So we just got our first payment from his income withholding notice on January 24th. Um, so at the rate that it's coming in, it will cover current support plus it'll be paying off the arrears a little bit each month as well. Thank you. Mr. Barton, are you satisfied you received your right to legal counsel by conferring with attorney later? Yes, sir. Is it correct that uh, the court's inclined to follow that recommendation? In other words, you're gonna, uh, there, you would hold the key to the jail. You got 43 days to have your head, but you'd hold the key to that. The only time you're going to serve jail is if you fail to appear when required or you uh, ignore this obligation. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so, the, again, the recommendations if you admit to contempt this morning, the court would uh, suspend the, the 43 days in jail and give you a date to come back to review with Ms. X April 2nd. As long as you're making support payments from now and then, you're, you're not going to go to jail. You could hold the key to that. If, however, you um, lose your job and you do nothing, then obviously there's a problem. If you get injured, come and talk with a friend of the court. Let them know what's going on. Follow motion reducers board. Just don't sit on your hands. Be proactive. That's all the court's asking, okay? All right. Um, is it correct or you wish to admit to contempt then this morning? Okay. Raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth of God? Yes, sir. Please state your name and the current mailing address for the record. Uh, my name is Tommy Jordan Lee Barton. Thank you. If you haven't changed your address and writing in front of the court, do that when you leave today. You fill out the forms. Have you done that? I haven't done it here yet, no. So yeah, you do that before you leave. Go down in front of the court. There's a change of address form. You need to fill that out in writing. And if you move this one order address, you need to inform the front of the court of any change of address so you get notices. Yes. Um, so go on and do that as you uh, exit the courthouse building. All right, uh, Mr. Barton, uh, do you admit and acknowledge that you are obligated pursuant to the order of this court to pay support? For the maintenance of uh, children born to you and Rachel Woods. Yes, sir. Did men acknowledge about saying rearages about $4,600? Yes, sir. Did men acknowledge that um, you've not, other than the income withholding payment made recently in January of this year, you've not made payments since July of 2023? Yes, sir. I am aware. Did men acknowledge you've had income uh, between July of 2023 and January of 2024? I'm sorry. Do you acknowledge or admit you've had some income between July of 2023 and January of 2024? Enough to keep me um, going. Yes, sir. I do. You admit acknowledge you had income. Yes, I you admit acknowledge you didn't pay any of that toward your child support. I admit that. All right. Ms. Six, do you have any questions of Mr. Barton? I have no additional questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Leiter, do you have any questions, Mr. Barton? I have none, Your Honor. Well, the court finds a support or existence case. Mr. Barton acknowledges his court obligation. Mr. Barton has failed to comply with that uh, order, and there's a resulting averages in excess of or about approximately four thousand six hundred dollars. Had Mr. Barton actually due diligence, he would have paid something during that period of time. He would have contacted the front of the court, would have taken filed a motion to reduce his support, done something as fair to actually due diligence as a base for contempt. This court will qualify Mr. Barton to be in contempt of the court for failure to pay child support. The court will follow the recommendation. Uh, Mr. Barton, is there anything you want to say before the court follow impose a sentence? Um, we have been talking, her and I. We get along. Wonderful. Um, 
Judge Brownlick. Um, just a moment. I'll, I'll give you a chance. Mr. Okay. Barnes, is there anything you want to say before the court of orders? I was just going to speak for her, honestly, because <laughs> she was trying to talk. But okay. I, I'll give her a chance to speak. All right. Um, that, that's it. All right. Yeah. Mr. Leiter, do you have anything you want to say on behalf of Mr. Barton? Your Honor, I don't, other than the fact we certainly like to thank Ms. Hicks as well as the court. All right. Ms. Hicks, anything you want to say before the court imposes the sentence? No, nothing further. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, ma'am. Is there something you want to say? Yes. Um, I normally wouldn't come to something like this today, but um, as he said, we, we do get along. He sees the sun. And at this point, I am asking that you consider wiping the slate clean of the past rearages that you can. This court cannot do that. Quite clean. You can, if the are due to you, you can do that. You can, you can weigh them. Know. If the child is a public assistance, the, those smart rearages go to the state of Michigan to reimburse taxpayers. He, he's not on any sort of public assistance, and I okay. would like to request the portion, at least to myself, be waived so that there can be a fresh yeah. slate. Ms. Six, aren't you heard? Uh, Mom, she wants to waive the rearages, so she needs to come down and talk with the caseworker, or she needs to talk with you this morning? She can, just, she can just come down, since he needs to come down and do an address change himself, too. Um, if she comes down to the front window and asks for an affidavit to waive arrears, we can get um, that for her so she can fill out, and she then can waive all or some portion that is owed to her, and that would then be programmed um, after it's properly received and notarized. But she just needs to come down and ask for one of those at the window. Okay. Are you able to tell on your screen whether or not there's any verges due to the state of Michigan? There are, Your Honor. There's $467.77 owed to DHS. All right. All right. So you can waive everything about almost $500. Okay. Uh, you need to go out and talk with the caseworker, and you're doing this freely and voluntarily? Yes. No one's uh, threatened you in any way? No. Right? Um, well, it's wonderful. You can co-parent your children. Yeah, so are they you're working together. Mm -hmm. In any event... The current post sounds as follows. Um, and again, the sport still continues, so you need to, you might get a clean slate now, but you still got to deal with it in the future, Mr. Barton. So the court's going to file the recommendation. Having found you in contempt, you're going to serve 45 days in jail as follows. Two days, nearly given credit for the two days you have served. The 43 day balance is suspended, reserved. The $500 bond that you posted that is forfeited toward the rearages. Now, again, if it's waived, uh, once $477 are collected, the balance could be reimbursed uh, to. My mom, in front of the court, address that. Finally, Mr. Barton, you are to appear before Miss Six. You can appear via Zoom on April 2nd, 2024, at 8 a.m. April, April 2nd, you'll be able to notice. So we don't change your address. You'll be able to notice April 2nd, 8 a.m. All she's going to do is going to be quick just to monitor to make sure you're still that you're still playing with Pioneer Mellon and they're, they're getting the support. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you, Your Honor. Anything further than this morning, Miss Hicks or Mr. Leiter? No, I have nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. All right. The, that will conclude this matter. All right. Good luck, sir. Thanks for coming in, ma'am. If you want to go out in front of the court, you can talk with the caseworker, tell me how to waive some rearages. And uh, Mr. Uh, Martin, you want to fill out the change of address form? Yes. Okay. And if you have something happen in the future, just be proactive. You gotta, do you know who your caseworker is? No. Every case got a caseworker. Talk to the caseworker. Oh. That caseworker can help you out. For example, if you get injured, you file a motion to reduce support if you don't have the income. If you get laid off, I'll motion reduce your score. Just be proactive. Don't yes. ask it. All right. All right. Good luck. You're welcome. Thank you, Gibson. Back up here. Bruce Gibson. Yes, sir. Uh, for the reason, for the record, Mr. Gibson is appearing in the person court this morning as ordered by this court for possible contempt proceedings. Also present is uh, attorney Timothy Leiter, who has been court appointed to represent Mr. Gibson. Mr. Gibson, did you make a payment in front of the court this morning? Uh, not this morning, no, sir. Okay. We uh, paid two thousand dollars, so to. Oh, you okay? So you posted bond. bond yeah. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, okay. All right, Mr. Leiter, um, have you had a chance to uh, confer with Mr. Gibson? Your Honor, I've had a chance to confer with Mr. Gibson as well as friend of the court attorney, Rebecca Hicks. We do have a resolution to this. And again, again, I will let Ms. Hicks place that on the record. Ms. Hicks? Um, Your Honor, in this matter, uh, Mr. Gibson did post the $2,000 cash bond. Friend of the court is um, looking for him to admit to the finding of contempt. He had two days in jail, so two days immediate credit for the two days served, forfeit the $2,000 cash bond towards his arrears and set in adjourned date on my docket to March 26th at 1 p.m. so we can monitor um, for payments. And I do believe that he did pick up a motion packet or was going to pick up a motion packet today to modify his support 
as it is charging um, quite high a month. Wonderful, thank you. Um, sorry, Mr. Gibson, uh, the court's inclined to follow that recommendation. Uh, first of all, are you satisfied you received the right to legal counsel by conferring with attorney later? Um, yeah. Okay, is it uh, correct that you wish to admit to contempt uh, pursuant to this recommendation that the court not impose immediate jail? Yes, sir. All right, raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, not for the truth? Yes, sir. Yes. State your name and current address for the record, please. Bruce Gibson. Did you uh, provide, did you change your address of writing with a friend of the court this morning? Uh, no, but I can do that. Do that on your way out. Uh, there's a form you need to keep them informed. The address you had in Falker is in Gloria Street in Wayne, Michigan. If you, if you move in a chalet street address, you need it for the court writing. Because otherwise, you're going to mail you notice, you don't get it. And that's you know, that's why bench warrants issue. Right. So you need to do that on your way out today. Your Honor, I, the day we had court and I missed, I actually was here in the courthouse with uh, Tracy Blackwell. Okay. And our time together spent longer than it normally would, and I kind of lost track of what time it was getting to be. So I did miss my hearing that day, but I called immediately to try to figure out what I had to do to take care of it. Again, today, change your address and write in front of the form. So just yeah. stop down there's a window on the first level. Now, Mr. Gibson, you admit and acknowledge you're obligated to pay child support for the maintenance and uh, support of children born to you and Melissa Griffin. Yes. You admit and acknowledge you have outstanding arrearages uh, in the amount of uh, about $25,000. Yes. Okay. Uh, you were fortunate you've not been charged by the General with filing out support. I mean, this gentleman just appeared from the jail and he had 22,000 errors and he's been charged by the attorney with the felony out support. It's a criminal charge for which you go to prison. So you need to really make a big effort to start reducing these errors so because uh, you're on the radar for the attorney general. I'm, I'm surprised this got by them uh, so far. Uh, Mr. Gibson, do you acknowledge that uh, you've not made any payments since July of 2023? Yes, sir. Do you acknowledge you've had some income since July of 2023? Yes. You've not been any of that toward your child support, correct? Right. All right. Mr. Laird, do you have any questions of Mr. Gibson? No, Your Honor, I do not. Ms. Six, do you have any questions, Mr. Gibson? No, Your Honor, I have no additional questions. Thank you. Okay. Are you currently employed, Mr. Gibson? Yes, I'm self-employed. Self-employed. Um, again, if you are not getting income in, you need to uh, reduce your support. All motion, pick up the packet, get that filed. The sooner you get it filed, the sooner you can get some relief. Could be any reduction will retroactive to the date you file your motion. So if you wait till February to file it, it's not going to retroactive to February. So get that filed. Right now, it's clicking on at fourteen hundred thirty dollars a month. Right. Uh, I actually have a quick question. Um, I'm filing a motion to have that reduced tomorrow, okay. and when I do, can I request a court appointed attorney again? No, it's a civil matter. You're, you're only in talk court attorney when in fact there's a possible incarceration like contempt. Okay. You know, something you got to handle yourself, or you need to retain an attorney. Uh, anyway, the uh, based upon the testimony that's been presented this morning, uh, the court. Finds by acknowledgement of Mr. Gibson that he has an obligation to pay child support and that he's failed to do so. And from 10 rarages in excess of $25,000. Mr. Gibson acknowledged not having uh, paid any child support since July of 2023. Now saying, in fact, he has some income. His lack of due diligence is a basis for contempt. This court will quantify Mr. Gibson being in contempt of court for failure to pay child support. Uh, Mr. Gibson is directly going to say before the court imposes a sentence. I'm inclined to follow the recommendation, or I will follow the recommendation of Ms. Hex. Uh, no, sir. Right. Mr. Later, anything further? Nothing further, Your Honor. We do thank Ms. Six as well as the court. Thank you. Ms. Six, anything further from your perspective? Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Mr. Gibson, the court's going to order you serve 45 days in Rock Kind Jail's follows. Two days immediately, you give them crap for the two days you have served. The balance of 43 days is suspended. You hold the key to those 43 days. You can avoid any time. You simply keep contact with the friend of the court and be proactive. Yes. Um, finally, you're ordered to appear before Ms. Six for review on March 26, 2024, at 1 p.m. It can be via Zoom. You can appear from your home or from work. A uh, copy of this notice for that date and time will be mailed to you at your new address, provided you change that address this morning. Um, the $2,000 bond we posted shall be forfeited to apply towards the rarages. So I'll bring the rarages down to about uh, $23,600. But you need to make a really concerted effort to get below that $20,000 to uh, keep uh, off the Attorney General's radar. Okay. Any questions? No, All right, you're good to go. Uh, stop down in front of the court and uh, fill out that change of address form. And they also have a four-page list of employers. You can ask for the employment list. So a four-page list of employers in Southeast Michigan that are screaming for employers, employees, I should say. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of a kind of bad health situation right now. I actually have surgery scheduled for February 6th. So you've got some jobs that maybe you're a clerk at a hotel or a gas station where you don't have to do it physical labor. I'm not sure what discipline is, but pick up a copy of the jobs list to take a look at that. Yeah. Um, 
And if, if you are disabled, you need to file a social security, social security. Right. Be proactive. No, I I'm able to work. I, I just didn't want to get a new job and then tell them immediately, hey, I'm going to be off for quite some time because I'm having a major surgery. So. Okay. All right. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leiter. Thank, Thank you, Your Thank you, Your Honor. Is now in session, middle page three, Crystal Rice versus Thomas Villarreal, Jr. For the record, this matter is before the court, the courts are reviewing plaintiff's father's parenting time. I'm sorry, defendant father's parenting time. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. President is attorney Dwight Kuhn representing the plaintiff's mother, Crystal Rice, and Ms. Rice appears to be present with Mr. Kuhn. Good afternoon, Mr. Kuhn. Good, uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Is it uh, Thomas Villarreal, a junior president on audio? Yes, sir. Right. Good afternoon, sir. Good and afternoon. The parties, have, the parties have conferred with Ms. Barrow in front of the court this afternoon. Ms. Barrow has provided a fine recommendation. Uh, just noting that parties are still on the wait list at Family Counseling and Shelter Services. Uh, Kurt was afraid of that because I know there's like a two month backlog with that agency. That agency is the only agency in Monroe County that provides this type of service. So it's recommended that that, that continue um, and that the parties appear back for its court to review party time April 30th at 8.30 a.m. via Zoom. Uh, we have a 16-year-old. Uh, all right, Mr. Kuhn, is this recommendation agreeable with your client? Yes. Um, obviously, it's... Uh, so at this point, that, that this agency is so busy and so backlogged has there been any contact between the minor child and dad since we were last in court back in December? Yeah, uh, yes, Your Honor, if I might explain. Sure. Um, FaceTime. The day before yesterday, um, Mr. Villarreal's grandfather passed away, who was the great-grandfather of the child in this case. Uh, he attended the funeral uh, where Mr. Villarreal was, um, along with his mother, uh, who is friends with the grandparents, um, and sister, sister my, uh, my client's daughter, uh, also attended. And Mr. Thomas Villarreal started an incident in, in a room full of people. Uh, Excuse me, that is all false. I, Mr. Villarreal, just a minute, don't interrupt. I'll give you a chance to respond. Let Mr. Kuhn finish, please. please. If you want to put my client under oath, Your Honor, she witnessed the entire thing. Um, but the short version is he started an incident att verbally attacking his son, uh, told his son to change his last name, um, and that he had every intention of having nothing to do with him in two years as soon as this proceeding is over, and essentially that he was going to make his life, my my paraphrase of what, what he said, um, to the child was that he was going to make his life hell for the next two years, Your Honor. Um, I, obviously, Mr. Villarreal is going to have a different opinion of that. Um, but this is this is part, I mean, this is what's been going on um, for a long time here. Um, well, the court's disappointed to hear that, Mr. Kuhn. Mr. Villarreal, did you want to respond? Yes, um, that's absolutely false. I went over there, I went over there, I talked to my son, and my daughter, and I asked them, why haven't they responded to my calls? Your know, grandfather's been in the hospital for two, three weeks prior to um, passing away. Um, Miss, Mrs. Rice got in my face and said, do not talk to them. They don't, they don't want to talk to you. And she attempted to do what she does and make a scene. There was nobody, no, no one but us heard the conversation. So I don't understand what I was uh, yelling and screaming at my grandfather's funeral, sir. That is absurd. That is totally absurd and out of line. And I did not repeat anything that was said out of your mouth. So I don't know if you were there because I didn't see you. I didn't see you on the sign-in list, sir. So how do you know what went on other than through Mrs. Rice? Mrs. Rice decided to get loud 
to get angry because I came over there to try to talk to my son. I waved to them guys. They did not look at. They looked at me and looked. And Mrs. Rice said something that I didn't hear. That I didn't did not under her breath. And I came over there to to say my hi. How you doing? And she got right in my face. Okay, like she always does. It's always my fault. It's always my fault. I can't talk to my kids. It's always my fault. That's when I. And if you really want to go there, um, and say there are sixty witnesses. Okay, first of all, there was 102 people there. Um, so you're falsely, that's that's wrong. Um, I didn't see you signing on a sign-in sheet to be there. So so you weren't there, so you don't know the truth. You know, Crystal's truth, my truth, and then there's the real truth. Well, it's the most unfortunate, and a shame on both of you for uh, conducting yourselves in that fashion in front of the children. It obviously takes two. Well, yes, and, uh, I, I, wanted, so, so. I wanted to step outside, Your Honor. I was going to ask these guys to step outside. First of all, Mrs. Rice was not, but was not, is not liked by my family. She does not. They do not want her around me. They do not want her around any of my family. Okay, she should not. She should have given me a call, like an adult, and say, "Your son and your your, your daughter is coming up there to look out for them. I'm gonna drop them off and I'll pick them up." Period. She did not have no rhyme or reason to be in my grandfather's funeral. Period. Okay. And then to hey, start. Uh, that's, we're getting off the topic. To Mr. Miller, we're getting off the topic. We're not going to get into who's uh, if someone had a right to be there. It's just out of respect. It's, it's, that, out of that respect your son was my there. grandfather. She should not. We should, we should have went outside and had a civilized conversation. But I can't. That, I can't have a civilized person conversation with mrs rice because she's never civilized okay all right um mrs brown with the uh i don't know what your thoughts was power what about does uh, we have a 16 year old child what if miss scott from the front of the court interviews uh, this young man i have no problem with that your honor I would also request that she interview the party's adult daughter who was there and overheard everything be more than happy yeah. to support independently what happened okay she, she's not a party to this so uh, perhaps we could just add to the recommendation uh, Mr. Villarreal and Ms. Rice at uh, uh, Ms. Scott in the interim. Uh, we have between now and April. Shall interview the minor child? I want to. Can I, can I uh, add to that? Uh, can I? Can I kind of respond to that? Respond to um, what? Because you know, Mrs. Rice. Order. Mrs. Rice has um, coached my son into saying a lot of things. My son Wait, has wait, told me that Mr. He Villarreal, marijuana. Mr. Mr. Villarreal, Mr. Villarreal, the friend of the court is uh, very experienced, Miss Scott, and she can tell whether or not a child's been coached. Okay, so I don't believe that. Miss Scott, do her give job. Me, give me She's her a, credit. Trained. And give me her we'll credibility. Of, and let, let me see if she's credible because I have a behavioral science degree. Okay, I have just as much as any person in this. United States of America to take care of and to monitor any special needs kids or any ch child that has been under an adult care that is bad, good, or indifferent. So I'm just as qualified as her. I got the certifications. Do you want me to show them to you? All right, Mr. Villarreal. Here, the comments are noted for the record. The court notes that you're, um, uh, we're just going to add this recommendation that your son be interviewed by the friend of the court. And that of is uh, the 16 year old the by the friend of the court. Ms. Scott, and she'll provide a written report, and you'll both may be able to see that when we come before our okay. April 30th. And I, would like to, I would like to know the person that is interviewing my son so I could do the I research. Really said, on Mr. Villarreal, Catherine Scott. Catherine Scott. Three times now. I can't hear you that well, sir. It'll be it'll be set forth in the written order the court's going to enter. Okay. Same. And the Mr. Villarreal, much. Mr. Price will transport him to that uh, appointment, and uh, we'll get some input directly from your son in terms of what his uh, his relationship is uh, with his dad and whether he wants to see his dad. Uh, um, I'm sure Crystal Rice will have a, a very long written uh, essay for him to study. Okay. All right. You've already you've already made your concerns known, but we'll give it a try. We'll go from there. Uh, is uh, Miss Rice is your son in counseling? Uh, no, he is not. Um, 
They okay, were, any objection, Mr. Kuhn, that the court ordered he, that she enroll him in counseling? Obviously, he, right. he's got to work can through I, whatever issue he's got with his dad. Can I ask for him to have a drug test? Mr. Villarreal, please don't interrupt. I'm asking Mr. Kuhn a question. Mr. Kuhn, does Ms. Rice have any objection to enrolling this child in counseling? No, Your Honor, as long as the counseling occurs uh, close to his home as opposed to being in Monroe. Right. Well, she should make contact to the family counselors that are that will take the insurance that she has for the benefit of the child and enroll that child counseling. So we'll also add the Sparks recognition that uh, the plaintiff mother shall uh, forthwith enroll the minor child in counseling so that the counselor perhaps can address the issues that this dad, we want, we want the child to have a relationship with his dad. Um, can I say something, Ryan? Yeah. And you should inform Mr. Villarreal of that counselor, the two of you should have in custody. Ms. Rice, so once you've uh, selected a counselor, inform Mr. Villarreal. I don't know if you uh, communicate by uh, text uh, or other means, but uh, you need to let Mr. Villarreal know the name uh, the name of that counselor and the location and how often when the counselings are scheduled. So at some time, point in time, Mr. Villarreal can follow up with the counselor to find out what he can do to re restore the, and repair the relationship with his son. Okay, Mr. Villarreal, you had a question? Yes, sir. Can I have my uh, son submitted to a drug test? Um, I will pay for it. There's no basis for that, Your Honor. I'm going to object. Um, this child is... I, but I can't object. I want to no basis for the court agrees, Mr. Kuhn. Well, why, why do you... Uh, is he missing school? Is he acting out of school? Has he been arrested? He for, has uh, told me violations? that he has... He has told me that he has smoked marijuana, Your Honor. And he has told me the last time I seen him, I, I, I he, he told me he told his mother, and I said uh, there was no punishment done, and he said he got it from his mother, and his mother allows him to do that. And when he comes over to my house, he goes through withdrawals. That's why he doesn't want to be here. Well, You're that's right. the bottom line. In, in this court's experience, people don't go through withdrawals after smoking marijuana. If he's oh, failing in school, yes, Mr. Proven, Mr. yes, it has. He's, it's been proven he's failing in school or has other issues, science, then maybe you can have petition the court for a drug treatment, but there's no basis for it at this point in time. So it's probably not order a drug no, test. Mr. Brough, you can modify the court's recommendation, please. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so again, uh, keep on the waitlist for that agency. We'll review this April 30th at 830 in the interim. Uh, Mom, Ms. Rice shall enroll the minor child in the counseling and inform Dad the name of that counselor. And the further that the minor child, the 16 year old child, shall be interviewed by Catherine Scott. Yeah, and and my, uh, I, I assume that um, my son is will not be able to, I can't authorize my son to have a drug test. That's correct. The court has stated once I'm sorry, again, there's no basis for the drug tests. There's no indication that he is uh, um, engaging in criminal what conduct. Do you, what do you that he's He's been uh, he's been sleeping all all the time. Every time he comes over to my house, he sleeps. He throws up. He has diarrhea. Okay, what is the symptoms of that? Is is he sick every week? Every other weekend? Mr. Villarreal, talk with his teachers at school. If he's failing in school and missing school, then uh, then there's a basis for the court might consider that. Oh, so you have general that's custody. Not a base, that's, Mr. Not a, that's not a question. Right. Sorry, keep interrupting the court. That will conclude this hearing, Mr. Villarreal. I'm not going to talk over you. Contact okay. to school, the teachers, get reports. If he's not going to school, he's missing school, he's falling asleep at school, then maybe there's a basis for that request. At this point in time, the court does not believe there's a, request, there's a basis to, to order a drug test of this minor child. So that will conclude this hearing. Uh, we'll see everyone then in April. Thank you, Ms. Barr. You're welcome, Your Honor. I'll have that new recommendation in your queue, and I will have someone delete the old recommendation. Thank you. All right, you can everyone can zoom out. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Welcome.